Hey everyone, designers, creatives alike, anybody who's here, welcome back to my channel. I'm Kim, I'm a product designer and slashy creative in general. Anyway, welcome back. It has been a crazy wild month. Um, for all of you that aren't aware, yes, I am a full-time product designer and that is my full-time job while juggling content creation and AR projects. So. It's a really exciting time, but I really try to keep up with content on YouTube and making the most of this. Now, with TikTok actually rolling out sometime soon, I, I don't have this feature quite yet, but where are you gonna watch your most longest form content? What do you think of that? I think it's so scandalous. I think it's hilarious that, um, you know, all the companies are trying to fight for our attention and where we are the most and stuff. So leave a comment down below and Anyway, before we jump into it, um, I just wanted to share that tidbit that it's in crazy, but if you guys are particularly interested in seeing more about product design, like what that kind of world is like, or my AR side projects, I'd be more than happy to share that as well. This video is mainly targeted around how to get started in AR. Like, what the hell do you do? Where do you go? What's out there? So this is going to be talking about that, but Today is my day off. So um, I like to run some errands and right now I really need to clean my desk, which is why I'm not in it at my desk recording this video. Um, so let's do that first and then get started on where you need to get started within AR. Oh, also a really cool shout out to the Looking Glass. I made a short reel a few months ago, if you're not aware, um, on opening it up and seeing this awesome, cool hologram display. I'm gonna talk a bit about that in this video as well. It is super freaking cool hologram displays like what is that what does that look like and why as a 3d specialist in the field you might really want to get one let's let's clean my freaking desk up it, it's a mess and uh it's my day off, so I need to clean. So I really wanted to share the looking glass display. I don't know about you, but two things. I need to have my desk really clean in order to be productive. And I also always have to be looking at something inspirational, sort of like a rest for my eyes when things get really stressful or something. I just sort of need to take my eyes away from the screen and look at inspirational content in something inspiring for me. So two ways I go about this. I create a lot of Pinterest boards and I have those pulled up on my iPad. And recently it's kind of a new addition that I've been hoping to talk a little bit more about, but time has been killing me. The looking glass display portrait has been crazy for sort of enabling me to be inspired. Now, what is the looking glass display? Basically, it contains 3D objects. It allows for these holograms to actually exist. What the heck is 3D good for if we can't really experience it to its full potential? One of the biggest troubles that I've seen with 3D artists is displaying their actual work and presenting it in a way that still holds its weight. But with the looking glass display, it actually is a container for your 3D element. It creates this crazy opportunity to display the volume, the depth of 3D objects. Now, the really cool thing about it is that no matter what angle you're looking at it, it still holds the depth of that 3D, 3D object. This is one of the struggles of presenting a 3D object on your computer. Now, let me quickly show you. Now, if we adjust this a little bit left and to the right, you can actually see, and it's, again, one of the hardest things is also is capturing this in video, but in person, it is, wow. I definitely see this being an asset to 3D artists, 3D specialists, when they wanna showcase their work. You can connect this to your computer and go ahead and test play your game within this display. Phenomenal. So you can take this and run this with your client, showcase them your either 3D object as a hologram, you can play test with them your creation while utilizing the looking glass display. Nothing is more exciting than taking a 3D object and actually having it exist within our world. And the looking glass display does a phenomenal job at actually giving 3D objects their own space to exist alongside our world. So it is gorgeous. So if you're interested in picking one up yourself, I do have a link below. Um, so you could save some coinage there, but I will add to this. 
the Looking Glass display has its own technology and it is not limited to 3D objects. You could take your photograph from your phone as long as it has, as long as it has a good amount of depth, put it in there and you can also witness the depth that it creates and adds to your photo and create that photo into a hologram. I don't know where I thought it would be when holograms would exist to this kind of capacity, but it is definitely an exciting time for us to experience a lot of these new technologies. I wanted to share that with you and a little bit of why the looking glass display is on my desk at all on a personal note. With that being said, I'm gonna stop there and we're gonna jump into the rest of the video about augmented reality and how you can get started. Okay. So the really cool thing about augmented reality right now is that Technically, there are two paths. Either you're making filters or you're making experiences overlaid on the world in another kind of way outside of filters. So you're dropping like a uh, informational card and like popping it out of a um, piece of furniture or something that tells the user, hey, this piece of furniture has cost this much. Or just dropping a full-blown animation, this like robot that walks around your whole room or something like that. There are so many ways to go about it, but technically there are two. So filters or not filters. So with filters, if we're gonna dive into filters, basically there is Instagram, Spark AR, or we have Snapchat's Lens Studio. It is up to you, but this is what I'm gonna say. Download both, open them up, see what templates they have and which one speaks to you. Open that up, start playing around with it, change some of the colors, publish the filter. When you're ready, I know this is a hard and vulnerable ask, but when you're ready, release it into the world because the moment you do, you are an AR creator. I don't care what anyone says. I want to empower you because you did the damn thing and you pressed that publish button. Choosing a platform is entirely up to you, but I will say that Lens Studio has a lot more filters because they've been in the game a lot longer. So their filters are a bit more advanced, um, not saying that you have to learn more to them, but they are advanced because they have more filters. Now this is Lens Studio by Snapchat. As you can see, they have so many templates. This is where you want to start from because things are already created for you here. You don't have to start from scratch. Spark AR doesn't have a foot tracker quite yet. So these are little things that vary between the platforms. That's why essentially it's up to you to Download both of them, open them up, see which one speaks to you, but telling you that Spark AR has some templates. This is Spark AR Studio, and they have also quite a few templates. They're somewhat overlapping with Lens Studio, but there, there are some variations here. They have less templates, but still really, really great. Great interface, easy place to start from as well. And like Lens Studio, they do have a learn aspect, but the cool thing about Spark AR is that they have a 3D library that is attached into it. So it's connected actually to Sketchfab. But I will mention that Lens Studio has a lot of baked in effects as well. It's just not connected to Sketchfab, which makes it a little bit different, but still both really, really powerful and awesome for creating really cool advanced, well, early, filters, but also really advanced filter. But Lens Studio has more templates. So open that template up, change things around. And when you are ready to publish it, publish it because that makes you an AR creator. You did it. Even if you didn't publish it, you still are one because you, you took the leap to create and jump into this platform to create those things, right? And if you do publish it, please tag me in it. I would love to see it and explore with you, promote it wherever I can. And when you're at that stage of publishing, however simple it may be, the next step is to follow a tutorial if you didn't do so already. If anything, maybe start with the tutorial first. When you choose a template that you're most excited about as the next step, as really the best starting point for starting augmented reality filters. There are a lot of filters to choose from. And the best thing that I did was head to YouTube and watch them step by step because whether you like it or not, sometimes some of these menus, these platforms can be complex and that's okay. You're a beginner. You're starting out here, right? And tutorials are a really great way to follow step-by-step -step how someone did it. And you learn so fast by doing that. Now I will say, if you're following from a YouTube tutorial, change it a little bit so you could personalize it, make it your own and then publish it. Boom, then that's a little bit more personalized. It's created by you, it has your touch to it, your color to it, however you want to describe it. 
but it is yours in essence. And a lot of these templates, yes, there are template starting places to, to go from, but this is the best place to get started with filters. So say you don't wanna create augmented reality filters, Fine, what is next? If you don't wanna start from AR filters, then the next thing is creating AR experiences that are actually outside of that, outside of our face, over the world. We have Reality Composer, which is Mac-based, um, so that is unfortunately the constraint there. And there's Adobe Arrow, which is a really great drag and drop kind of software, which I have a tutorial on, and if you wanna watch that to get started right away, it's gonna be linked I'm terrible at doing this either here or here, but as a way to get started, it's really easy. It also has a 3D library linked within it. So you can use the assets there to just start creating that experience. And something really quick that I made with Adobe Arrow is just like, I grabbed a 3D flower, dropped it into the space, I made it spin 360. And when I walked near it, um, as one of my most recent reels and when I was ready to try it out and see how it worked in the real world, I opened up the Adobe Arrow app and I launched it on, I think my night, oh, I'm calling it a nightstand, but this little table back there and it was really, really cool. So it's a really easy way to get started with augmented reality that is casted onto the world. Now, if you are without Adobe, without a Mac, a really other great opportunity that is as easy as a drag and drop experience that I described just now, Zap AR has their own studio of tools and it's really designer friendly as well. Okay, so this is essentially Zap R's interface and you also have a few templates to start from. Image tracking or world tracking. What the heck does that mean? You have some examplers, uh, you have some examples here to start from, which is really, really cool. The powerful thing about Zapar is that you don't need an app to download to open up your AR experience. Now, this is a limitation with Adobe Arrow because your client, for example, will then, then need the Adobe Arrow app to jumpstart your AR experience that you sent them. But this does not require a external app for anyone else to download. You could just give that essentially to them. This is a really great trial period that Zap Works, Zap R gives creators, anyone who downloads their, their software here. <clears throat> because you could get started from a designer's perspective, you don't have to code to create these augmented reality experiences. The only limitation there is that it's a free trial, it's limited, you can only have like three projects or something, and you know, that's the extent of which you can create within that area. But it's a really great place to explore if you don't wanna make filters, for example. And the exciting thing about augmented reality in this area of creating AR for the world that's casted out into the world is that you get to affect the space in different ways. So. Let's say if I wanted to make an AR experience where I walk into my room and AR glasses are on, on the horizon. If I were to have AR glasses and I were to make an experience for the world here, maybe I might want to have information on how much coffee I have left so I can give myself a heads up on, hey, you should probably order coffee within the next like few days or something like that. If I approach, let's say the kitchen and I see like, in an information card that says, Kim, you have like two scoops of coffee left or something like that. It's an idea, run with it, create your own, <laughs> play with it, but it's an example of something I wish would alert me when I walk to the kitchen. So take anything you want with that, even start from my tutorial or anywhere else to create some of these experience experiences within either Adobe Arrow or Reality Composer or Zap AR and Zap AR as well as all the other platforms, have like phenomenal case studies of other things you can do with augmented reality. If you wanted a starting point, I've linked you to a tutorial, uh, but I've also let you know some of these platforms that currently exist. And the great thing about them is that they're all free. I mean, Reality Composer is absolutely free. Um, Adobe Arrow, I believe is free, but it's just limited on the fact that you have to have an Adobe subscription. I think, from what I last checked, I think it was free, but I believe there is an Adobe Arrow Android app as well, but I, I'm not sure if you can actually create within that app 
on your phone for Android. So last case is Zap AR. Honestly, it's gonna be the best case if you don't have a Mac, like I mentioned, or you don't have an Adobe subscription and you don't have an iPhone or something. So these are definite ways to get started if you wanna create something today. And since they're drag and drop, honestly, you could just bring something onto the canvas and launch it that very day and create, record those experiences on your phone and just like post them. And if you do go down the world kind of augmented reality path, share them with me. This is what I'm saying with everyone that I hope to inspire at least with this augmented reality journey and stuff is let me know. I would love to be the high person that shares your creations with the world. A really cool, exciting thing about augmented reality is that a lot of people are turning augmented reality experiences into NFTs. That is a whole exploding era. For this reason, I wanted to make this video to get you started in creating whether you're making the filters or making the AR experiences for the world. AR NFTs are very, very big, very huge. So regardless of whatever you may be making, you can also turn it into an NFT. I have a quick reel on it. So I will post the AR. Let's see if I can link the reel that I have on here of how to make your AR an NFT on OpenSea. Super exciting for the AR world. We'll see where it goes. Tag me in your creations. Add me on TikTok, Instagram, or Twitter, whatever you end up creating and publishing. If you wish, tag me in your creation. I would love to see it, promote it myself on all of my platforms. So don't forget to do that before the end of your exploration. Anyway, I'm gonna wrap it up there and I hope this was helpful.